Welcome to Test Frame Tuesday, a, um, a hopefully, hopefully weekly thing where we talk a little bit about one or two things that the test frame can do. Um, so I, I can't really, mm, it's a little bit hard for me to go over an entire test frame for Test Frame Tuesday because I kind of want to make these like short little videos that you can just enjoy uh, without having to go like full brain on stuff for like half an hour. So we'll just talk about one or two things this can do and make this a weekly thing um, with various frames around the museum. So, you know, over a long enough time period, you could have a pretty good idea of how these things work. This test frame is called the master test frame and it's part of the number five crossbar switch. Um, the name is pretty indicative of what it is. It's the master test frame for the office. So in this machine, they really squashed down all of the testing interface to one or two uh, frames or panels in this case. Um, this is kind of in contrast to the older switches where the, the physical space occupied by the control panels was much more, um, much wider. Uh, so in this frame, they kind of put it all in one place. And then this frame basically reaches out to the machine and asks the various parts of the machine to do something so it can observe what they did or how they behave. Um, a really great example of that is I can ask the machine to give me dial tone. Um, I'll select a dial tone type of test and I'll select marker eight, which is our dial tone marker, which is the one responsible for getting dial tone. And uh, I'll give it a line location, which I've already done. And we'll ask it for dial tone. And it said, sure. Um, this, uh, these lights here in particular are the indication that the test worked. Um, this frame, the lights don't give you any more data than it worked or it failed. Um, if you want more specific information on the nature of the test, you can ask this frame to drop a card. Um, and then the card will tell you exactly what happened. And then you can carry this card around with you or write on it or whatever you want to do. Okay. So that's a really simple test. We just ask the switch to give us dial tone. Another kind of test we can do is we can ask this frame to reach out to an originating register and then dial into it and observe how that OR behaves when we dial into it. So uh, I'll select an OR class of test for an originating register. I'll select our dial tone marker again because that's how we're gonna get to that OR is via the dial tone marker. And um, let's go ahead and dial 232-5123. That'll be the number we'll dial into it. And just to make this more fun, we will select uh, a trunk link frame and a specific originating register that we want to play with. Let's play with number three. So we'll choose three there and frame zero. And then we have to choose group A. So let's dial into originating register number three on trunk link frame zero. Let's do it. And it worked. Uh, these lights just show you that the marker returned a success condition. And then these lights over here show you that the dialing completed. All right, so that's a pretty simple test. We can also test uh, trunks, which is a thing that I do a lot on this panel. Um, for instance, we can test different kinds of trunks. That's what these keys are for. For instance, we can test outgoing trunks. Um, in order to do that, we need to select a completing marker, which in our machine is marker zero and marker one. So let's just use marker one. Uh, we can do outgoing trunk and we need to give the machine a code um, that will get us to an outgoing trunk. So let's try 832. Um, 0010, which is a phone over there in the number one crossbar. And we will just see if that works. All right, so it gave us uh, an error. In this case, trunk busy TV. So this was not a successful test. Um, it should have picked one because I didn't ask it to pick a specific one. So it should have just given us any available it's possible, eight, 
three, two. Yep. Okay. So it's possible that both of the eight three two trunks on this machine are currently in use. Let's try again and see if we get one this time. No. <gasps> I wonder why. Okay, so now we have to figure that out. Let's Oh, it was because the trunks were actually busy. Someone busied them over the weekend to test something and they just had busy plugs in them. So it was telling me trunk busy because the trunks were busy. Interestingly, the outgoing trunk test doesn't actually get us this frame to the different, the distant office. What this does is it asks the marker, can you connect me to an outgoing trunk if I asked you to? And the marker will either say yes or no. Um, you saw a trunk busy response where the trunks were all busy. And then the good response again is that I actually did it great. If we wanted to actually talk over that trunk and play with it, we can do an ITDO test, which is incoming trunk in a distant office. And again, we'll do 832-0010 because it's a convenient number to dial. This time we'll use marker O just for fun. And when we hit start, it'll actually go get me a trunk, dial a number out onto it, and ring a phone. That's the difference between OGT and ITDO. We can get a little bit creative with the trunks. For instance, um, let's say we wanted to test the ability to handle, uh, like in this machine, if you prepend a one before the number, the call does not go direct. It goes out to asterisk and then back in, like kind of like a tandem. So we can actually ask it to prepend a one in front of that call. And what'll happen now, and you can't see it, uh, sort of standing here, but the call will leave here. It'll go to asterisk, um, which is the Linux PDX business, and then into the number one. Here it's going to asterisk. Asterisk goes to the number one. And that test worked. Um, we could get more creative if we wanted to. Um, by asking for something else. Let's see. Let's do a miscellaneous class of test. Miscellaneous trunks include uh, permanent signal trunks, reorder and tone trunks, um, all kinds of weirdo oddball stuff that doesn't fall into the normal intra office or outgoing category. Um, so we do a miscellaneous test using marker one on the permanent signal trunks, and we should get, yeah, we got a permanent signal trunk. Yeah, I hear the permanent signal recording here. And eventually we'll get the receiver off hook tone in like another 30 seconds. So um, let's make it more spicy. What happens if permanent signal, uh, all the permanent signal routes are busy? Well, we can choose RA1, which is route advance one, and that will get us to the second choice permanent signal routes, which it did, only it fails weirdly every other time. Again, please. Okay, that worked. Um, I see the red light over there is showing me that we did get to the secondary set of overflow trunks, which is great. And then we could do a route advance two is what if all those trunks are busy? Now we're on our second failure route. And now we don't have a red light over there and I bet I just have a busy signal. Yeah. So we can ask the marker to do all sorts of weird oddball stuff for us. Another thing we can do is we can try a coin call. Now coin calls are a little bit different than normal calls. So I can say, uh, we'll put a coin in the coin box and I will choose a coin class and we will dial incoming Dial that number through a coin trunk. Ah, it worked. Uh, we can do it without a coin in the box. So we have not deposited a coin, now we're gonna try again. And I got the please deposit a coin message. This call requires a 25 cent deposit. So I can do stuff with this frame, like control, for instance, whether there's a coin present, 
um, what type of call we want to place, what trunks we want to use, which would be that, um, what line we're originating from, what number we're calling, and what particulars we want, what particular equipment we want to use to route that call through. So this is a very useful frame. Um, it also has a remote control, which is great. So we can set it um, to repeat. You don't really even have to do that. It'll work without it. But we can plug in a remote control at various points around the office and then use that remote control to run this frame remotely. Yeah, that's really handy. Hey, hush. The, the one weird thing about this, uh, and this is true of all test frames, you'll see this again and again, is that this this frame will never tell you what's wrong. That's not how these test frames work. Um, this frame will allow you to poke the machine in very specific ways, um, and then you can observe the machine's behavior, and if you ask, it will tell you specifically what happened, but there isn't anything here that tells you what the root cause of your problem is. That's something that you need to figure out by poking it in certain ways and then observing the behavior and then testing on and on and on. So you really have to know how to use it and it takes a lot of practice. Um, there's like hundreds and hundreds of pages of material just on this frame, which is crazy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. We'll see you next time on Test Frame Tuesday. Bye. <laughs>